Well, let's go ahead and call for this uh, work, work session to order. Um, Marty Digger is out of town. Uh, he'll miss tonight's meeting, too. Um, and Ashley, you're on the, can you hear us? You're on the telephone? I'm online. Okay, great. Um, this is a work session where we're going to um, share our thoughts, and ideas, and opinions on two agenda items we have. While Jim Flitz told me that we really could take action, um, I think the better practice, unless there was an emergency, and I don't think either of these are an emergency, I think the better practice is to have some direction uh, to put something on a future council agenda meeting so that the public hears about it, can be there, and have comment. So I think that's, unless someone objects to that, I think that's the way we'll plan to handle this tonight. So we have two, two items on the agenda. One is the first one is the Lynn County request for funding safe, equitable, and thriving SAT community tax force position. Um, and the second is the council directing, direction regarding the smoke free and alcohol free parks. Um, I would like to finish in time for us to um, fix our hair and stuff before we go to the <laughs> council meeting later. Um, so uh, let's see if we can get through this. Um, so let, but let's start with the, uh, the one that's been on the table the longest, and that's the uh, Lynn County's request for the set community's task force position. Um, and I think you know, just if someone wants to, to comment to start the discussion, then uh, feel free. This is a work session. I wasn't going to wear a coat. I was going to roll my sleeves out. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I mean, we, we all, all got the email, I guess, and, and uh, you know, some proposed uh, language and potentially some draft language. I mean, I think that what I've gathered over the last few months uh, from a number of conversations, um, uh, we had a meeting then uh, with the Gazette uh, editorial board and, and others uh, with the county and school district. You know, I don't think there's any question that everybody wants to kind of move this thing forward, uh, that we want to make some progress. Um, the set task force, I think, did a really nice job of highlighting some of the issues um, and then providing some recommendations um, for action in order to, to move forward. Um, so the discussion, I think, uh, focused a lot around the $100,000 and, and you know what the city would do. Um, and uh, to me, First thing we got to do is have the conversation with the county and the school district. I think you know, acknowledging that working together, uh, we can make a lot more progress than if we try to go it alone. So, um, you know, it seems to me that I, I hope at least we can get some consensus on doing that part of it. You know, moving that forward uh, and making sure then that we uh, figure out with the county and the school district, other uh, not for profits that are working on these issues. Um, how exactly the best thing uh, what I think uh, will be a city investment in at some point. So, I, you know, the, the draft that went around, I think, is, is um, something I can support. And, you know, obviously, it would be interesting to hear what other people say, too. Yeah, that draft is really just something we could think about. It certainly isn't the, the need to be the final answer to any of these things. So, I agree with everything that Tyler just said. So no reason to reiterate it. I, I like the language in it. Um, I think that it spoke to the fact that uh, we have as a city took those recommendations very seriously uh, by investing in giving the needle, uh, especially when we look at our, our crime rates and the different things that are happening among staff. I know they have a process that each director is bought in and, and they go over that metrics uh, when they meet. So I really support uh, the language. You know, I think you know. I sat in on several meetings, and and uh, and I think we we all were mailed before the uh, the outline because we were asking for more detail. And I went through and re reviewed, uh, re read uh, the task force uh, steps that were set forth by Dale and Stacy, uh, and sent uh, dated April 9th. And I think they did a good job of outlining the questions we had that came out of some of our informal meetings. And so, in my mind, you know, this uh, the you know, as, as Tyler said, the uh, we need to be a part of this. And it, but it's always you know, it always comes back to 
uh, the question is, uh, do we provide additional funding toward the, the creation of the staffing and, and those costs related to that? And I think that um, uh, that's an issue that probably needs to be discussed today. Do we want to provide any other funding? And, and how long? What's the term? And, you know, when do we provide it? And uh, my personal opinion is, I, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, I think the request for 100000 is probably more than I'm very comfortable with. Uh, but I do, I would like to see this. I think it's just, it sends a positive message if we provide some funding and to see how this goes in that initial year's allocation. And uh, this might, to help them uh, get established and see if this all uh, comes together as they hope and we hope you know, as a group, but I totally agree with Tyler in the fact that it's really a team effort, and, uh, and that team effort involves potentially the request for funding, and, and I'm willing to discuss some funding, not at the level that was requested, but I would like to maybe see us put some funding on the table so that they know and can plan out the next steps of the task force. My opinion. I can support the memorandum that we have before us and in thinking about this issue uh, for quite some time, I think it's one of those things where the recommendations, until they are taken care of, they're not done. And so years into the future, uh, they need to be addressed. And to me, I really liked uh, the letter that Jenny Schultz had in the uh, CRAC paper about a month or so ago, six weeks ago. I think this is a great opportunity to exercise some creativity on each of these issues and get the people in the community together to work on those issues and then provide the funding as needed for whatever solutions that they have. And I'm not concerned about the money part. We can always come up with the money if we have a good idea. Um, I'm hesitant to just start out with the staff part of the whole thing um, and creating perhaps a bureaucracy in the making. But perhaps it would make sense to start out with getting the right people to table for each one of those issues and start moving them forward and provide the funding as they put it forth that, gee, we need X amount of funding and the school district, county, and city would come forth and share in that cost and peck away at them as you go, but also have accountability on each and every one of them. You may not work on all of them simultaneously, but you may pick up some at a time and then some may kind of drop off and others go on as accomplishments are made. I'd use the example of like Neighborhood Finance Corporation if you're starting. Doesn't mean that's the last uh, sort of thing that you're dealing with with affordable housing and things of that nature, but that certainly is a big step. So that's my opinion of it and I think this is a good start. <coughs> yes. um, thank you, Mayor. Um, I, I agree with Tyler and said so far and certainly agree that the, the initiatives put forward and the objectives put forward by the set task for force are um, things that we have to strive for and work toward. Um, I also want to recognize the fact that the city of Cedar Rapids has already invested over three million dollars in accomplishing some of these goals. Obviously the work's not done, um, so I don't want to give that an um, impression. But I do think that it's important that we recognize that we've not been sitting idle since the task force brought forward these objectives, and we have been working on them, um, and that I think we're going to need to continue to work on them. I agree with Councilman Overland that, that the, I take a look at how long he had worked on the um, Neighborhood Finance Corporation in the process in which he did it, which was, you know, get out there, identify the goals and objectives, Scott, and then and then you go back in and you hire accordingly to what is needed. We've come a long way with many of these objectives, so I kind of like to say, okay, where are we at now? Mm -hmm. What needs to be done now? How do we help move this forward so we're working together? Because I do like that idea of us, you know, the collaboration between the school board and certainly the Lynn, you know, Lynn County Supervisor. Um, but I, 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 and I'm not saying but, there are, maybe I'm willing to invest in, in the task force. Once we kind of get our finger on where we currently are, a lot of this information that I've received is, you know, still, it's, you know, it was done in March. And so some of it was done in January. This is June, the end of June. Where are we today? 
and I'm not against providing funding as appropriate. And, but I want to I want to see where we are today, and um, and then sitting down with the other two entities and saying, okay, how are we going to, you know, what's next? What are we going to do next? So that's my opinion, man. Thank you for the opportunity. Eric, thanks for uh, putting the work session together. Appreciate it. Uh, I, I, I certainly have a different take on some things. I'm, a, 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 I'm frustrated and, and, and a bit disappointed in how this has played out. I, and you just mentioned that we started in January, and here it is in June. Here it is in June. Uh, Stacy Walker has done everything we've asked him to do. We asked him to submit the business plan, to do the due diligence, to meet with all of us. He has done that. He's done more than what I've seen other people uh, do for similar projects at this level. I think we all agree that the money was not the issue. We heard the city manager say that. I think we're all in agreement that, that somewhere uh, within that, that, that $100,000 100, uh, allocation that we can afford to do it. But what concerns me is that I have felt throughout this process that, that, that we have not been completely honest with why we have gotten to this point today. You would think that these issues that are important to us that we spend significant money and resources on would sort of rise to the top and we would be willing to tackle it, uh, at least in a way that brings us together. And it just, it has felt through this process that that wasn't really the case. For whatever reasons, territorial, turf, I don't know. But it it, it, it has mucked things up. And uh, uh, I fully believe that it is healthy from the community's perspective to have a third party, to have the community look at how we do things, how we work on these issues, uh, how we tackle the, the, the you know, issues uh, uh, that impact you know, sort of a different segment of our, our, our community. And I think that's a healthy exercise that we shouldn't be afraid of. And uh, I have been made aware of pushback throughout the city, throughout some departments, that maybe think that we're doing enough. And uh, granted, we are doing some things. We're doing some great things. But I think this, this exercise is a healthy exercise because I, like some of you, saw how it worked before. And that was a great exercise. We brought people together from the community who traditionally might not participate in these things, and they got engaged, and we discussed these issues. And it wasn't perfect. But the intent was the right thing. And, and so here we are, you know, uh, the, the, this memo that we got last night, you know, we, we, we had the discussion with Gazette. When was that, April? Yeah. A few months ago. Yeah. During that period of time, nobody but Councilwoman Van Orney sat down with me and said, hey, let's figure out how to do this. You know, and, and what do we need to, I sort of come from the perspective of, you know, let's not try to figure out how not to do something, let's try to figure out how to make something happen. And I think this is an intent at it, but when I don't see a money figure, I mean, that's like a developer coming to us and saying, hey, we want to build your city, we want some city incentive, but the developer doesn't have any skin in the game. And here we are, you know, we don't have any skin in the game. And, 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 and skin doesn't necessarily mean that you really are engaged and in it for the right reasons, but it sort of helps, you know? And so, you know, for us to say we want to be a part of it and we want to, we want to work on the process and, and we want to, you know, continue to tackle these issues, but then we, we're not financially engaged, that, that, that just, 
I would feel a lot better if we had something just so that we can show everybody else in the community that these issues are important to us. We're not just giving lip service, but we are actually driving the discussion. These are urban issues that we should be driving. And so, let's, you know, that's where I come from as a start. Ashley, would you like to comment? Yeah, um, so I have, you know, I appreciate everything that everybody said. Um, cumulatively, I think it's important to acknowledge that we all have good intentions. Um, the amount that was requested was such an insignificant portion of our budget, which we all know we have money for. I don't think it's an issue that we should. I, I'm, I'm confused as to why we could have so happily funded a project initially during the information gathering stage. I understand that the school has their own things going on with the loss of state funding and stuff like that, or the non-renewal of that, and their uh, their master plan proposal. So that's kind of where their money is tied up and, and maybe preventing them from financially participating. But I think this is a really unique opportunity to have shared governance um, you know, initiative on some very important issues. I also think that this is something that we did a huge disservice to our citizens by waiting six months to address. Um, we had people coming in droves. I know that at the very least, I, I had people come to me weekly about this since before you know, I was able to join council. Um, I think that, you know, I was, in my eyes were wide open at the things that they were presenting, and I don't think that we have, um, while we have, you know, CRF been very proud of the stuff that our staff does, I think we're always moving forward, but I think this is something that's very intentional to specifically, you know, take extra attention to address these matters, and I don't think um, we're being intentional enough about it. That, that's all I think was in reverse that, you know, our shot fired have increased dramatically. Um, you know, we're up. So if we want to talk about staff there, you know, we have four meetings a year with PSYF. I don't think that's adequate enough. I think we need to be doing more. Um, you know, I don't think reviewing staff at a PSYF meeting is addressing the root cause analysis of the issues that are really happening. And that's what I really see this as, as doing. And I think it's a great opportunity. You know, I was fortunate enough this last week to come, uh, you know, to be able to go to Louisville. Every, I, I attended a breakout session. Every single one of the, uh, you know, representatives from uh, Cincinnati to uh, places in New York to places in California to but any city, if you pick a state, there was a representative from there um, at the Welcoming America, and every single one of them has somebody um, that they intentionally had, you know, paid for. And essentially, they kind of refer to it as an equity coordinator. I mean, our counterparts in Des Moines have an equity coordinator. Um, under their uh, under their administration, and this is what that's what they handle. So to say that this is that there's really um, certainly there's precedent in our surrounding communities in our state for something like this. I fully support um, you know meeting them meeting their financial requests. Certainly there have been things that have come through my desk that have had less evidence, less of a business plan. Um, I appreciate the things that uh, that they see. Uh, became the face of, but certainly this is not Supervisor Walker's project. You know, Dale and I and many other uh, community citizens were also weighing in on this and helping, you know, to address. So this is not about Supervisor Walker. And I just want to make that very clear. Um, this is something that a lot of community investment, as we originally were very invested in this as well, and came up with a lot of great information. So I just want to be very intentional and say that I support um, pursuing this endeavor um, wholeheartedly and would give it, you know, my support, um, whether that means financial or not. And, and I do think that we should be intentionally financing this. Um, I think that we can, you know, kind of look at it a little bit further. I think Jenny Schultz had a great point that maybe we fund projects, but I think that we should earmark money for that if that's the case, if that's what our intention is. Um, I think it's very weak and, and becomes more of an MOU, um, which can be very weak in nature if, if we don't. Um, if we don't outline that. So, um, you know, more than anything, I just appreciate the opportunity to have this conversation at all because it is something that, that I want to be very uh, purposeful about. So that's kind of where I stand on it. Um, I've been very clear, very explicit about my intentions on this uh, since it was brought before us. 
Um, and really nothing has changed. If anything, it's only strengthened, especially having just come back from the Welcome to America conference. So that's where I'm at, folks. Thank you, Ashley. Um, yes. Go ahead. Appreciate uh, You know, I think that the question is, I think we're all on the same page, you know, as far as joining together and, you know, wanting to tackle the issue with the county, with the school district, with other groups. Um, you, you know, so then I think the question becomes um, the f funding and a structure. You know, what is the correct structure? How do we go about funding? How do we make decisions about what things uh, we're going to fund? And, you know, Ashley brought up, Council, excuse me, Council Member Van Orney brought up, um, you know, different models. Uh, the one in Des Moines, there's somebody within the city. Um, I'm sure there are other models. Um, uh, the county has proposed a model, uh, Jenny Schultz in particular, but um, others have proposed um, a model. And so, it, you know, I think the, the important thing here is that we get the structure right and that we are choosing, you know, making a very deliberate attempt to decide what is the best, whatever the dollar amount is, if it's 100, if it's 200, if it's 50, right, mm -hmm. whatever that dollar amount is, that we are using it in a way that most effectively addresses the recommendations that were in the proposal. And uh, because we have at least more than one, but I think probably multiple, if we kind of put out a, a, you know, some kind of call for you know, ideas, um, we need to get the structure right in order to evaluate those so that we can be uh, deliberate and, and effective about it. So. Um, that needs to happen. We should put money into it. I, I, I think everybody agrees we should. The question now becomes, you know, how do we get to the most effective way possible? To you know, I, I would I would agree with you, Tyler, uh, Councilman Ellison. I think there are enough intelligent people in this room that we can hammer that out and have a good discussion on the best model in a relatively quick time. Frank, I think the question becomes, and this is one you have to you have to agree on or disagree on right off the bat. Is that entity housed inside the city of Cedar Rapids or is it housed outside? I personally prefer it to be housed outside. I don't know where. We've talked about United Way, we've talked about other places. But I think when it's when it's inside, then that invites skepticism on the part of the community when it comes to questions of uh, social justice, I think by having it outside of the city and where it's housed, I don't care. But I think it, it, it adds an air of impartiality. And that, in essence, gives us more credibility with those people that we're trying to engage with. And so, I, I think we've had, you know, we met with Scott and, and Scott and, 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 and Super, uh, Councilman Hager. We had a good discussion. And I don't think anybody knew, we didn't know what it's going to look like. I, we need to have that discussion because there could be better ideas that we have. We need somebody to sort of manage it because we're all working and we're trying to do policy. So you need somebody who's going to help facilitate the mechanics of that. And I don't know, I don't care. But I, we should be having these discussions now instead of wasting time. So I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Jump right in. Good. Um, thank you, um, Dale. I appreciate your comments. Um, I, I really, I, I, I really think that I would like to see. To your point, I would like to see some opportunities for additional models. Right now, I'm, I'm saying one. Mm -hmm. Okay, but it's one. But what else has worked successfully? Out in, out in, out in our communities. You know, is there some place else rather than reinventing the wheel? Are there other places that we could look toward that has done things successfully? And we've done a lot of research on this. Um, but to um, to Scott Overland's point, Councilman Overland's point, you know, they didn't start out with you know hiring someone. They went through the process. They determined what they needed. They determined that they were going to model themselves after a very successful um, input finance corp out of Des Moines. And so that model, that model, that structure was kind of already in place. And then they went on to the next steps. And I really appreciate what you're saying. I would like to see that conversation take place as well. There's two right here. We did oh, foresight 2020. Yeah, so we so did 15 and 
if, if that's what we're intending to do, you know, we could easily get the, the uh, you know, get from Des Moines um, exactly what they did to, to see this. Now, theirs is not a shared governance model, but, but that's easy and done. And to say that, you know, to, to duplicate, I mean, essentially, this is not something that I have seen duplicated as a shared governance model um, in the state. So we are going to have to be innovative in that respect. But to say that we need to wait until somebody else has done this because we don't want to be a beta tester, I mean, in all, in all due fairness, we just, we just did that by having the set task force two years ago. Ashley, let me, let me correct myself. That, that's not, um, that was not my intention to say that we, we, that was not my intention to say that we had to wait in any way, shape, or form. I, my point was, you know, what has worked successfully in other places around, you know, whether it's around the state, whether it's around, you know, any place in the country. What works well? What's the, you know, is there a good model that, that we could emulate to some extent, um, you know, maybe not perfectly because it is shared governance, but maybe there's some other kind of outside the box thinking way of uh, how we go about this. So, um, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm open. I'm, I'm just asking for, you know, additional conversations surrounding this. You, you, you went when you get down to it. All this is is community building, coalition building, and instead of the, the traditional issues that we we built those coalitions with at the economic alliance, we built these with a different demographic, and and it's not perfect. <laughs> Sometimes it, when you get to issues like affordable housing, those are tough discussions, frank, tough discussions. But as a community, we need to be doing that stuff. And right now, we're really we're not. We could do a better job at that. That's all this is. What it looks like, to, I don't know. You know. Well, this but we have to figure that out. Yeah. yeah. That's, right. that's the decision. That's yeah. Yeah. I would disagree. I mean, I think we have more skin in the game than any of the other organizations by far. I think we're, we've shown a commitment. We'll continue to show a commitment to address the uh, task force recommendations. Um, I also agree that I, uh, maybe the city could have uh, a designated person. I, I also agree that having someone outside the city, not only, I think maybe more so so that the county and the school district and the community don't look at it as though it's just one organization's effort. I, so I get that. I, uh, it's just to me, yes, is it the United Way? Is it the Greater Community Foundation? I mean, it, it's kind of this the structure of how we do it. I think that, and I don't think that's going to take a long time. It's this proposed resolution, I think, hopefully shows the community that we are really, the effort's been done, that we're really committed to this, and we want to get to the table. The table we should have been at six or eight months ago, when this first came up. If we had all sat at the table then and said, yeah, this is a great idea, but it didn't happen. It wasn't collaborative at that point. Um, so we are where we are. Let's let's reset that. Get together. I'd, I'd be fine putting a deadline on this. You know, okay. That Scott heard that. Yeah. Say deadline. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm happy about a deadline. I'm ready to move this on yeah. too. Yeah. I, I you know I think uh, to send, uh, again I think we're all saying the same thing. We all want to get to the same spot. We've got a, a momentum that was built by the task force, and I think what they're asking is the commitment as to a time frame to get this the final organization set up and and determine you know where is that located you know i've got a couple ideas on donated space uh, that might be independent uh, that uh, would bring to the group and, and i think uh, right or wrong i think it's important that uh, we respond by saying that uh, once that committee is done that the city is going to have x amount in the game dollar wise and i'd like to see that happen. In other words, we just need to know so that as the committee plans, they're going to lay out their plans based on where the funding is coming from. Well, I think, I guess from uh, one, of the, one of the things in my mind that's a priority is to spend as much as possible directly in programming and, you know, I don't know what the, there's probably some nonprofit term for this, right? But, you know, kind of effectiveness is services. So, yeah, serves the, the, kind of the direct services. And so I don't, and that's really, I think, what the discussion needs needs to be. To me, I want to limit the 
overhead. For like yeah, I know. Sure. Okay, so that's, you know what I'm saying. That's, yeah. yeah, you know, and so if we, it, you know, I had a conversation with Carla uh, Tweetball at the um, Community Foundation today, you know, for a while, kind of talking about, you know, this, and she's obviously been engaged with it for a long time, and, you know, how do we end up, you know, putting as few resources into managing and um, overseeing and as much as possible in your direct kind of investment. Um, you know, so there's, there are organizations, I think, you know, yeah. Scott, like you said, that, you know, we can kind of partner with, or the, 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 and when, when I mean we, I mean county, school, district, city, you know, whatever this kind of entity is that it looks like, in order to, you know, instead of necessarily hiring an, you know, an FTE and spending $75,000 or 60 or whatever that number is, you know, we can pay an entity to administer grants and those kinds of things and, you know, have this group, whether that's the county, city, school district, you know, provide some of the bigger picture goal setting. So, um, you know, I, I like the idea of putting a deadline on it in the sense that, you know, we're going to, you know, we as a group, like the council and, and this group in general are going to have kind of a concrete, you know, kind of game plan about where we're going. I'm not sure about putting a specific dollar amount on it because, at least from my perspective, you know, I'll be interested to see what that group kind of comes up with for a structure and, you know, how much of it is going to be direct as opposed to managing, you know, and all those kinds of things before, at least from my perspective, I'm comfortable saying 50 or 100 or 200 or, you know, whatever that number is. Well, I mean, let's agree right now on this, on this baseline point. This is not a high maintenance operation. The, the 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 city had the last money in, and that money basically got spent on this. You know, Introduce was that the city computer? <laughs> you know, that got spent on that, and and so this is, you know, the biggest resource is is people are putting their time in, and, and that's in common. You've got basically somebody like a Chelsea, who we have, who's coordinating these volunteers, these meeting locations, uh, the discussions that are coming into some uh, uh, ultimate scenario where you're developing a blueprint, you know, a working document. And so we don't, I don't see that and, and, and as far as, we're not going to hire, we're not going to hire a bunch of people. You're going to hire one person and I think you thought maybe a 1.5 somewhere down the road. But the, the money, the, the grant money is seed money. And that money is used to leverage. It's not going to subsidize a human service or anything like that. But if somebody's got a creative idea or, or, or there's a need, like the way the United Way and Time Limited Grants used to be, you know, how that used to, when there's a problem, uh, you've got a little bit of money with guidelines in place and a fiduciary uh, entity that, that administers that money. So it's not anybody else. And you've got a board. The city manager is on that board. The city manager is involved in the, in the decisions regarding hiring and firing and expectations. This is a group effort. It's a collaborative effort. And I really don't think that's a labor-intensive effort. I think people in the community want to see that happen. And I think once you get that core in place, you might see people like a Rockwell Collins or a, you know, some other entity that says, hey, this makes a lot of sense. We need to put a little bit of money in there. And then you've got a little bit of money to do something. But right now, it's just putting the infrastructure in place. So, Dale, yeah, well, I appreciate that you all got together, Dan, you and Stacy and whomever else in your group, and came up with this structure and model to put forward to continue moving recommendations forward. I appreciate that. Um, this is, uh, as I talked to Stacy, this is important work. I've said that to everybody. You know that I brought that table. You were part of it, yeah. When we first started these conversations, before it ended up with a set task force. So I find this is very important work. And everybody knows that, and all my colleagues knew that, uh, beyond a shadow of a doubt. But what I am interested in, I did just come back from the National Conference of Local Govern Governments, and there are collaborations going on between counties and cities and, and school districts and, and many other places. This isn't unique. Um, I don't know exactly what the issues are that they are dealing with because mm -hmm. I didn't delve into that and haven't had time to research until yeah. I got back. But these collaborations aren't unheard of. So I agree. I'm looking at what would be the best model for Cedar Rapids. So while you all came out and you have an idea, I think it's a great starter to the conversation mm -hmm. of what is this really going to look like. 
I know that the school district is a good partner. They, you know, they want to be included. I don't know financially what that would look like. Um, because I have those open dialogues with, with folks, both at the county and, and the school district. I think most of us on council do. Uh, we have a great relationship between all of us. So I'm still interested in what the process would look like, what the structure looks like, what Jenny Schultz had put forward. Uh, if we already have an entity in our community, like the Community Foundation that's there, uh, and we place money that goes into let them administer grants, I'm just not sure what it looks like yet that brings forward the best model for Cedar Rapids. So that's, that's where I am, and I support this resolution um, as it is right here today. And if we want to add a deadline of times that we're going to talk, and. Figure, figure it out together so everybody's at the table versus a few people who put, you know, and again, it's a great idea to continue the conversation. These are meaningful conversation, meaningful work. But I think it takes a few more people uh, at the table to discuss what that process looks like. That's what I'm hearing from my colleagues. That they want to be involved in what does the process and structure look like and does it necessary? is this necessarily the way to go or is there another way to go? So what I would say to that, Councilwoman, why not, and, and Mayor Hart, uh, what that, what that model looks like, I don't know, okay? Not adverse to the discussion. Whatever ends up being the, 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 the best uh, product for the community, for all these entities, I think, I, I'm certainly open, open to that. But I'm gonna go back to something I said to Scott a second ago. This is community building, building social capacity, and it ain't pretty. And every book, <coughs> is always gonna look different no matter where you go. A lot of times that's based on the people that are involved. And so what that what we're agreeing on right now versus what we end up with six months might now might look a little bit different. But I think there's some core principles that we need to have in place. That it's managed well, that it doesn't embarrass us, that the goals are the goals and the intent are what laid out laid out in the resolution. I think if we can focus on those guiding principles, then we will end up with something that we can all be proud of. But is it gonna be, a, is there a boilerplate, is there a template for, for what's gonna fit Cedar Rapids? I don't know. It depends on who's engaged. Mm -hmm. But I would certainly welcome all of you all. You know, Scott did this, I don't wanna date you, but 30 years ago, 40 years ago, when you were doing the ecumenical center, it was all these churches on, on, on Third Avenue, we were having issues with crime in that area. And he pulled all the churches together. And if you think this is tough, try pulling a bunch of <coughs> nominational churches together and, and see how tough that is. But he pulled it together, it's still there, it works. You know What this is going to look like, I don't know. And I'm not going to pretend to tell you I know what it's going to look like. But it's, I, 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 I was proud of what they did in the past when they got together and talked about these issues in a respectful manner and, and, and folks felt like they were a part of something. I think this is something that we'll all be proud of. So Susie, thank you. Mayor, I know you want to, we have another I know. Yeah, yeah, I, know. I, think it's, it's, I yes. think everyone here has, is, what I've heard is, is we're committed to funding this effort at some level when we know what the funding is. requirement is. Yes. 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 We have two weeks until we have another council meeting. Um, let's try to move this forward in those two weeks. Mm -hmm. Let's get together, I know, I'll throw out some dates next Monday. Let's get whoever can show up from these, from the county and the school district and from the city and probably the community foundation, maybe Spot United Way. Yeah. Let's just do it yeah. and see, try to move this thing forward. I, I think we're all committed to doing something here. Yeah. We just need to understand what the best use of, the most effective way to do this, to yeah. keep moving this forward. And, and, and I'll read the last sentence of, I think Tyler was involved and others in putting this together. The city of Cedar Rapids, along with committee members, will work to determine the best way to advance these recommendations and is committed to providing appropriate funding to whatever organization agencies can best deliver these services. And what I, you know, the only thing I would say, let's put a date in there uh, that advance these recommendations by a date as a goal date that we all can work toward. And, you know, I don't know, I was, you know, we're halfway into the year. Summertime. Summertime. So when would you, I mean, <coughs> you know, I was, let's pick a date. Is that 60 days, 90 days, 120 days? I say August. Let's be real. I mean, is that all right with well, you guys? Not, okay, we're not going to 
We're not going to vote on anything. No, no, but I'm just saying. So let's get yeah. our meeting next week, and then if we put don't have something more than this, then we'll put a date put in a date based in. on okay. that meeting. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, I, I, I think we need a date. I agree. I think we need a date. Okay. Is something else for you? Okay. Thanks for the conversation. No, no, thanks. Thanks. Good discussion. Thank you for coming, Sam. Um, <laughs> Uh, I'm not sure we're going to get through this, but the next topic is uh, 